everybody. Welcome to Jets Post Game Overtime, an exclusive live stream on SMYTOT.TV. Our guys will hand out their full report card from the game and give us much more analysis. Of course, Jonas Schwartz alongside Ray Lucas, Mike Westoff, Willie Colon. Jets lost 45 20 to Oakland to go 0 2. Let's begin with the offense. Ray, what grade are you giving the offense? I'm giving the offense a B. I thought yeah. the offensive line Look blew me away today. Brian Winters goes down early. Shell in his first game start. He's going against Khalil Mack. I thought they did a great job of protecting the football, number one. I thought they did a great job of running the football, number two. And Josh McCown, what can I say? Here's a young man that everybody's like, oh, we want Payton, we want Hackenberry, we want uh. Guess what? This young man played so well today. He kept him in the game all the way through. B for me for the offense today. Mike. I give him a C plus, and I look at two halves. In the first plus, in the first half, I'd have given him a B plus. I love the, some of the things they did with that offensive line. I like the keeping the extra lineman in, some versatility, challenging deep, mixing up the running game. I saw some really some versatility with that, and I think it was very good. Now, in the second half, I think the fact that some reality set in and the receivers were having trouble getting separation, it caused Josh to really hold the ball. I thought they had to have a little better answer for that and maybe helping him get out of the pocket. That's why. But I gave him a C plus, a very solid grade for that offensive performance. I gave him a B minus. I felt you got give credit to the offensive coordinator John Morton he helped this offensive line out to be effective on this pro you know be effective product on the field today Josh McCown had a great game no turnovers uh, 7 for 12 on third down great day for the offense but they got to pick it up I don't think they can play any better but they did today hopefully they can do it next week all right obviously you guys talk about the positives for the offense the positives for that offensive line Kelvin Beecham obviously a big big part of that Arjun Coakley caught up with Jets tackle Kelvin Beecham moments ago I guess you guys kept or stayed competitive those first two quarters. Mm -hmm. What changed in that third and fourth quarter? You know, we had an opportunity to um, close the gap, and we didn't. You know, had a turnover there. Um, still had to find a way to bounce back from, from adversity, but came out in the third quarter. Um, had a chance to put seven on the board, only got three, but we got to find a way to get those touchdowns. Um, and in a game like that, anytime we get the ball, um, we just got to find a way to score, and we didn't do that as, as frequent as we needed to. As an offensive line, when Brian gets hurt, you had a lot of moving pieces. How hard is that to find consistency during the game? You know, it's, it's one of the things. That's, that's the NFL. You don't have time to, to think about what's going on. You just got to find a way to get it done. Um, and we, you know, Dakota came in and did a, a great job. And Ben came in at the extra tight end and, and um, you know, didn't make any mistakes. But um, we just got to find a way to get it done. We don't have time to think about what's going on, who's playing, who's not. We just got to find a way to get it done. Seems like you're getting the ball moving a little better than you did mm -hmm. in week one. Mm -hmm. How do you build on that? You know, we go back uh, and practice Wednesday, uh, have another productive practice, and get the running game going again. You know, we kind of sputtered, sputtered, sputtered a little bit, you know, early on, but finally got it going. We just need to get that going on the first drive so we can really establish it, control the game, um, and just kind of play the type of game that, and the type of style that we know that, uh, that we can play. You guys kept it close, but then there's a big gap, but you never gave up. What does it say about this team's mindset? You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fight in this team. Uh, we're not going to give up. We're going to find a way to finish. We take a lot of pride. Um, and um, at the end of the day, uh, your film is your walk and talk and breathing resume. If you're not putting that on film, you're not finished, you're not taking pride in your work, um, taking pride in your job, you're not going to have a job for, for much longer. And then when a game like that and the score is, um, you know, it's, it's a gap like that, you just got to take pride. Take pride in the name on the back of your jersey and take pride um, in the name on the front of your jersey. You guys, you guys now go home 0-2. How big is it for you guys to play in front of your home crowd and get a win? It's a must win. I mean, that's just the nature of the business, the nature of the position that we put ourselves in right now. It's a must win. Uh, we got to get a win for our fans. We got to get a win because it's a, a divisional opponent. And we got to get a win because that's the next game. It's on our schedule. So we got to find a way to get a win. All right. Thank you. Yep. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much. Let's continue with our grades and switch over to the defense. Willie, what grade are you giving the defense? I gave the defense a D. I, was, uh, I wasn't happy with the group. I felt like they didn't show up. They didn't tackle well. I think that was the big factor with this defense. You cannot let big plays happen after the catch, and that's what you saw continuously after time. It's hard in the trenches, especially being on the road in Oakland. They just didn't show up, and uh, I'm starting to worry more about this defense going forward. Mike? I gave them a D also. I think the fact that when you look at 400 and over 400 yards offense, 180 rushing, giving up too many big plays and missed tackles. I believe Darren Lee is completely misaligned. I'm also not seeing enough chances being taken. This team is not good enough on defense to play a relative static look. I want to see some all-out blitzes. Let's see if the corners can hang on and cover for two seconds or three instead of 15. I think so. I want to see more out of this defense. I gave them a D. Ray. 
<laughs> I'm afraid to even I'm afraid to even make the turn. I don't even know why you're coming to me. F. And that's just for everything everybody. You heard exactly what they said. 190. Look at the big plays. Third quarter, 43 yard run. Fourth quarter, 52 yard run. Eight for 12 on third down. Not even nearly good enough. F. All right, Mo Wilkerson, of course, is a part of that defense. Here he is with the media in Oakland after the game. Mo, it looked like um, Todd came over again and talked to, to you and Leonard. Can you just talk about what he was saying to you guys, his, his message to you? and, and it was just, we Basically, you know, iterate what he said to the whole team when we came in. You know, uh, a couple of plays, probably like five plays, where, you know, we pretty much caused ourselves to lose the game. So that's basically two weeks straight, you know, critical plays that, you know, we're – Having miscommunication or whatever the case may be, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's on our, it's on our hands, it's on our fault, you know, and uh, we got to do better than that, and we got to execute better. So it's frustrating, like the last two weeks we talked about. This? It's frustrating, but at the same time, uh, like Coach said, you know, it's, it was progress shown. Like you know, at to the end of the game, we fought. You know, everybody fought hard to the end of the game. You know, uh, you know, every every phase, offense, defense, special teams, everybody fought to the end, and you know, uh, we did some good things. You know, so. We just got to build on that, you know, but it's something, you know, good. We feel positive in this locker room moving forward. After Todd called the D-line out this week, how did you guys feel like you responded as a group? I think overall, as a group, we responded real good. And I think as a unit and, and as a whole team, like I said, everybody showed, you know, progress. And we just got to keep, you know, building on that and moving forward. Was it different types of mistake against the run this week as opposed to last week? Um, so, you know, it's just little things. We're not going to get into detail of everything. But at the same time, you know, as men in this locker room, we know what we got to do. And uh, we got to do better, you know, with those, you know, those mental mistakes, those little things that's causing us to lose these games. Is it upsetting though at all when when you know you played better when you know you improve and you know there were so many good things to lean on but then you see the scoreboard and there's 45 points let up um at the end of the day you know like i said everybody's building everybody's getting better you know and um, we can't control some things out there but it's also some things that we can't control and those things that we can we just got to get better you know for example myself with the third down you know this critical things you know when i was at uh offside so you know uh at the end of the day we just got to get better at little things like that what did you think though? All right, that's Muhammad Wilkerson with the media. Let's continue on with our grades and talk special teams. A key, key play of this game happened on special teams. Mike, what grade are you giving the special okay, teams? I gave them a D. You could easily fail them because of the catastrophic mistake that Raymond made right before half. I think he was put in a poor position based on what he's shown uh, coming into this, and I think Jeremy Curley would have been perfect for that spot. The Jets have continued to kick fairly well. They punted. They punted okay today, and they kicked again uh, with Canizero pretty well. Even had a good onside kick, too. Yes, he had an excellent onside kick. So I saw some good, solid things there. They covered it well again. So you saw some positive things there. Obviously, th th that type of play just kills you. And, and it can kill the, it killed the momentum of the football team and turned the whole game around. And, and so that's a terrible mistake. I w I, I'm going to blame the coach for putting him in that spot. I don't think he belongs there. Mm, Willie. Uh, I'm going to go with C minus. I thought Jalen Carazero kept them in the game. He's been kicking extremely well. Yeah. I'm with Coach. They've been covering really well. Uh, this is got to understand, this is a special team was a flat out F last year. Now this unit is starting to, uh, you know, they're starting to prevail and they're starting to get an identity. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with the special teams of the New York Jets. All right, uh, Ray? <laughs> F. You I can't mean, give you, him an F, right? Yeah. yeah, for one play, I'm giving him an F. F Absolutely. F play, that, I mean, the punt return, I, I, I'm going to tell you this. Brett this Boyer, special teams in Brett Boyer is they also good well, They punted well. They had great field I, goal potential. All, you, all your stuff is correct, Willie, okay? But that punt at that time ruined the whole game for the entire Jets. So, all right, you want me to give – I'll give Raymond an F and his coach an F for even putting him back in the game after two muff punts a week ago. So, again, but I'll cover that in coaching as well. All right. So, yeah. All right. So, Will, I give him a C. All right. But Raymond gets an F. Well, all right. Okay. Does that make you feel better? One there, die, we all die. I think okay, we all feel better. That's it, F. There we go. We all feel better. Yeah. Uh, so, let's go to coaching, and let's figure out uh, what everybody gave in terms of grades for coaching. Mike, what grade do you give the coach? Okay, I give him a D uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, some things, things that I liked. I, I have to be give Todd Bowles some, some credit for coming into this game and really having a pretty disciplined – Game plan, one penalty in the first half. Yep. So really not too many mistakes. The one penalty, you know, obviously the, the, the punt return thing was devastating. But that I really did like. Some of the things and some of the adjustments on offense I thought were very positive coaching. 
uh, situations. What I did not like was the fact of what's going on with the defense. Mm -hmm. And I think this is his specialty, and I think he's got to do some maneuvering here that we can get a better chance. I don't think this team can cover that long. I want to see more all-out blitzes. I want to see the inside get those linebackers covered. If you don't get them covered up, for crying out loud, they're going to get killed. I mean, you know, I have a, I have a, we talked about being athletic and Darren Lee. I have a five-year-old grandson, Tommy, who's very athletic. Willie can block him. <laughs> I'm telling you, so come on. That's, you don't say. that's the way I'm looking at it. I mean, I want to I want to get him protected. I want you, coach. I want, you. Uh, I want to get him protected. Lord, Willie on, agrees. Guys. By the way, Willie agrees he can block your grandson, Ray Lucas. Well, I would hope so. Yes. That Willie can get a five-year-old. I gave him a D minus. Uh, Brant Boyer, again, the special teams coach, putting Raymond back there, has me scratching my head. Also, you know, the defensive coaches. You have Demario Davis covering running backs, which you know he can't do. This is two weeks in a row. Uh, Darren Lee at middle linebacker, another problem. Uh, you got to get your cornerback solved one way or the other. Is Buster Screen going to be a nickel guy? Is he going to be an outside guy? Right now, I'm scratching my head on a lot of different things. The one thing I did like was Morton's play calling today. Yeah. I actually like the fact that they threw it down the field, which also in turn helps out the run game because you get the guy out of the box. Uh, they did make some big plays, so D minus. It could have been an F, but I think Morton really saved the day for the offense for, for my grading. Right Willie, uh, I, I gave him a C minus, uh, but I have to be honest. The defensive side of the ball is concerning. You're talking about three issues: Buster Screen, Demario Davis, Darren Lee. They're killing you on defense. So I'm looking at the Jets going forward. You got Miami at home. You got Jacksonville. Then you got Cleveland. You can win all three games, but if you don't adjust these issues on defense, this can get out of hand fast and early. And that's not what I want to see. All right, so obviously the Jets will try to move past this game and get ready for the home opener against the Dolphins next week. Mike, what's your thoughts on the Dolphins coming to MetLife for the Jets' home opener this year? They, you know, they, they had the first week off after because of the hurricane, so they, they opened up today and beat the Chargers. The Dolphins don't scare me. I think they're a solid. Yep. I don't think they're a horribly physical football team. I would hope the New York Jets would come back here Fired and up be a little off. bit angry. Yep, exactly. Come in here a little 100%. angry and start, you know, PO. swing first, ask questions later, Correct. and let's establish a physical play. I think if they can do that, believe it or not, this New York Jet team can win three in a row. I kind of like what Willie said. Listen, you, get, well, Brian Winters, you know, you know, I don't know if he's questionable or not, but if he is. You got a chance to put Brandon, keep Brandon Shaw a right tackle and put Brent Cavalli at the right guard spot against Nadam Kasu, and you can make this an official run outfit and go right at the Miami Dolphins. I'm with Coach. This isn't a team that wants to be in a phone booth and make it bloody with you. You're at home. Knuckle up. You're already 0-2 zero, zero on, on the record score. Get nasty. Flat out. Nobody's giving you a chance, man. So let it loose. Let it rip. Get after this Dolphins team. You're at home. New York is behind you. Ray, final word. I agree with both what Willie and Mike said. I mean, Cameron Wake and Nottingham Kong Sue are two monsters. But, again, the way this offensive line played today gives me promise. You know, and yep. if they could keep their things going on offense and they could fix the problems on defense, and I think Willie hit all three right on the head, have to be adjusted, not now, right now. So, again, you know, when you're – when nobody gives you a chance, it's, it's almost fun. I was on a 1-16. And, I, you know, as a quarterback, they used to think I was crazy because I talked more junk at 1-6 and six than, like, I was in the Super Bowl. And ended up turning that situation around that Listen, season. there's yeah. leaders in that locker room. They just had to speak up, and they got to jump behind them, and they need to get this thing moving in the right direction. They, they got to they turn into back alley bullies. They just got to let it rip. Oh. And they got to do it now. Great stuff from everybody and to our audience. Thanks for uh, finding us. The live stream of Jets postgame overtime. Bookmark SMY.TV and the JetsBlog.com for more coverage and analysis of today's game. For Janae Coakley out in Oakland, Willie Colon, Mike Westoff, Ray Lucas, I'm Jonah Schwartz. We will see you next time. Have a great week, everybody.